Hello everybody. All right. So if you're watching this video, you're probably, if I had to guess somewhere in the early game, mid game, looking at kind of where to farm, what to farm, how to farm, um, how to play the game, some little just helps and hints maybe along the way while you're bored. So I'm going to kind of scroll around my account and look at different things while we talk about this. But really, I just want to talk about a couple of things that I, I constantly have to um, really remind players about and talk to players about when when they're not sure what to do with their account, um, whether it's in my guild or just general chatting with people. Uh, kind of the things that have set me up for success with where I'm at about, I don't know, I've, I've been playing this game for about 19 months, now, a little over a year and a half probably. Um, and in that year and a half, I've gotten up to 5.4 million GP. I'm currently in a Rhodium 2 uh getting ready probably one season or so away from struggling in kyber and i really don't want to do that to myself so i'm probably going to stay in the erodium field but if i really wanted to i have a feeling i can make it into a low kyber scenario um like kyber four probably get bumped to kyber five in the next season and drop back to erodium and hover between erodium and kyber if I really wanted to, but I just want to stay in higher rhodium for now until I'm actually ready to enjoy Kyber because I don't think I'd enjoy that too much. Um, but regardless, I just want to talk about a few things that have kind of gotten me to this point. So the one thing that you'll notice right here, just looking at this screen, I take first in squad arena every day. I do take first in fleet arena almost every day. Uh, some days I just choose not to. I got bumped out of first right after my payout today, so... It's kind of what happened there. Um, and then in Grand Arena, you know, this week is the final week of 5v5 and season whatever season we're in right now. We're a little over a year after the GAC changes took effect. And we're in this new model of GAC. And, you know, I'm not having a hard time with GAC. I'm actually really enjoying it. I won round one and round two. My first round opponent... Um, you know, he's a much bigger account than mine, but I just played a smarter defense than him. And it's easy to look at, you know, an account and go, oh, well, of course you beat him. You have Executor, you put JMK down. He doesn't have a, you know, he has Jedi Master Luke, but it's probably not good enough to beat your JMK. You know, what's he sitting on? Is he, does, did he have, yeah, he had Executor. I don't remember if he had it on defense or not, but uh, regardless, I, I don't think he did actually. Uh, if he didn't, he, he failed. Um, but regardless of what that is, uh, you know, I beat that guy 7.9 million GP. I beat my next opponent, uh, and we're waiting for my current opponent to attack, but my next opponent had 6.8. So you're looking at over 2 million and creeping on 2 million more GP than I have. Uh, more GLs in a lot of these cases against the opponents that I'm fighting. And I still come out on top quite often um and it's these are some of the things that kind of set me up for this that i want to talk about uh number one prioritize your crystals okay obviously you see here executor i had executor before i had general jedi master kenobi so i went padme into gas into jmk which at the time was a very doable route uh it it stuck with the meta and we'll talk about that here in a little bit um but it made sense for me to do for where my account was. I started off early going into Padme, and then it wasn't a stretch to go into Gas after that. Um, unlocked Executor after I unlocked Gas because I really prioritized my crystals. I saw what was happening to the Fleet Arena shard. I saw how fast people were unlocking Executors, and I got in on it early. I was probably the fourth or fifth Executor in my Fleet Arena shard, and it's a good, decent group of people. We don't really try to step on each other. We let each other take first when it's their, when, when it's their payout time. Um, and nobody's really out to get anybody in the shard. So it made it very easy for me to set up my crystal income very early in the game. I think I had executor at nine months into the game or something like that. Um, it wasn't very, well, I guess it was a little over a year now that I think about it. Not long after that, uh, I actually unlocked JMK. So around that year mark, I had JMK, I had executor. And my account felt good, but I also prioritized a lot of core teams because crystals don't just come from Fleet Arena, they come from GAC. So you need to farm into GAC. And with that note, you really have to pay attention to the meta shift, okay? Sometimes 
it doesn't behoove you to go after uh, the easy GLs because right now in the game, you know, you look at this guy. Um, what is this guy? He had three GLs, right? He had JMK, JML, and SLKR. Um, the week prior to this, I had a dude that had four GLs. He did not have JMK. He had like JML, C, Ray, and I don't even remember, probably Slacker. He didn't even try to attack my JMK. I set similar to the same defense that I set here where, you know, and this guy just beat on good old fashioned efficiency. And you look at his account and you're like, wow, how did you beat him? Well, it just came down to this stuff right here. It took him so many attacks to clear my JMK. And I was able to beat his offensive teams. I set a smart defense. I actually did scouting. And we'll talk about that in a minute. I, I scouted him out. I figured out what he placed. I had a rough idea of where he placed it. And then I just set my defense accordingly. Uh, realized that you know I wasn't going to beat him straight up. If he wanted to, he could throw three GLs at whatever my three strongest teams I set on defense were. And if I did that, um, I wasn't going to have enough to clear his offense. So I set a couple of teams that I knew were going to take him more than one battle to clear. And I just wiped his board. Uh, I don't think I dropped a single battle against this guy because I brought in adequate teams and used those teams appropriately uh, to completely dismantle his defense. Even though he had millions more GP than me, I was still able to take out his defense and knew when I got to fleets that I would be able to handle these two fleets without having to pull from my reserves. Now, fast forward to today's match, and you know maybe I'll add an update addendum to the end of this video. With this guy, you know, I went in and I scouted this guy. So let's go and look at his roster real quick, just from the roster perspective. I went in and actually looked at his account and went, dang, four Galactic Legends. This guy's going to be a pain to beat. And he has Executor. He has good fleets on top of that. He's got Negotiator, Malevolence, Finalizer, Chimera. Like, he has a lot of stuff. This dude might be able to beat my account. And so, <laughs> and it's crazy to say that he should be able to beat my account. But what I did was instead of placing just a JMK and Prey defense, I actually set a defensive wall. I set a lot of Omicrons. I set a lot of Datacrons. I set my JMK. I also set, you know, Dash Scoundrels with, I broke my Rebels apart so that I could, uh, and I set a, uh, a Han Chewie, Bam Dash L3 team up there, you know, because I knew that team was going to be a pain for him to deal with. And then on the top wall in front of my fleets, I protected my fleets with Darth Malgus. I still don't have Malak, but I still put Malgus up there. I prioritized Malgus. So that goes into that paying attention to the meta shift, looking at what they're going to, what's going to be the next hotness, what's going to be really good. And also scouting my opponent to see how many te good teams does this guy bring on offense? Can I possibly force a defensive hold when I know that this guy is going to set a boatload of his good teams on defense, I didn't even make it to the back wall. But the teams that he set in the front wall that I was able to clear, I think I, uh, what did I get, one drop? Yeah, one drop in the front wall between the five teams that I attacked. I didn't get any drops on his fleets. The other thing is setting proper compositions. This guy decided that he was going to set a triple attacker with his executor. He didn't even look at my account to see what I bring on offense. If he did, he'd know that I'm most likely going to put executor on defense and pull my negotiator for offense. If he would have set a non-triple attacker five-star executor defense, it would have forced me to bring my tie advanced into that battle in order to beat the executor. And if I did that, I wouldn't have the the good imperial fleet with tie advance and tie interceptor in the fleet i would have had to use a lesser version of that fleet to take on the rebels and i was actually nervous about the rebels because i didn't even realize that he set a triple attacker on defense i i don't know if he changes it or if i just wasn't paying attention but i didn't even realize it until i got into the match and i thought to myself dang i, I really don't think i need the tie advance with the with a negotiator to beat this. I think I can do it straight up. And I was able to, and it was a 72 banner win. And then I in turn took my Imperial fleet against the home one fleet. And I got that in a one shot, even though I was a way lower gear on a lot of my pilots, I was still able to one shot it because it was the superior fleet. So good proper compositions for the teams that you're setting, not just setting trash. You know, I've seen, uh, what was his, I swore he had something with his, uh, 
Uh, no, so his Qui-Gon Jinn team's good. But I've seen people set Qui-Gon Jinn and Jedi Knight Anakin. And I mean, you could say that he could do better, right? He could place, replace Ayla or Barris with um, even a four-star cam with the Zeta. You don't even need the Zeta on it, but the Zeta and the extra offense just makes that team so much more of a pain in the butt to deal with. Uh, and I say that, and I'm a hypocrite, because my cam is still sitting at low gear. I'm, I'm probably going to bring him up. But then if I do that, I wouldn't be able to set the Datacron with the team. So it's really looking at your good teams, the best teams that you have, and how do you play them the best. Setting this defense against this guy, you know, I really didn't want to set my Savage with my Malgus. I, I struggled to be like, maybe I should put Savage in the back wall. But then I realized I wasn't probably going to beat him if I didn't get a hold in one of these front walls. Uh, if he clears both my front walls, he wins. I just know that. he's he, He'll win. And I'm okay with that at this point because, like I said, I'm not trying to go into Kyber. This will lock me into a Rhodium 2 for the off week. Uh, it'll lock me into a Rhodium 2 for the start of 3s. And then hopefully between now and then I can unlock my Jedi Knight loot, get that extra Big Bang unit into my roster, and hopefully that will have me the effect of keeping me in a Rhodium 2 for all of 3s season. But I digress. Um. So scouting is super important. Knowing and understanding how to place the teams that you're placing, figuring out what the best comps are, looking at the comps and wondering, like when I look at his JMK, right? Or it's the same comp that I set. Why do I set that comp? Well, what does JMK do? He gets his ult and there's a lot of attacks out of turn. So Padme is really good to have on the team because she provides that extra protection up, makes it really thick, makes it a lot harder to deal with if you're not mirroring the team. A JMK mirror is really easy. A lot of other things against it will struggle especially if it's a JMK without Cat. If you set this comp and your opponent doesn't take Cat with his JMK or he doesn't have her, it makes it a lot harder team to deal with because Cat does stack up the big hits. Um, so the last thing that I really want to talk about in this is Datacrons and Omicrons don't care how you feel about them. I hear people all the time say, oh, I'm not farming Datacrons because I don't think that they're good for the game. It doesn't matter if you think that they're good for the game. Players like me love players like you that aren't going to bring Datacrons. You know what one of the biggest things that these guys have in common with each other that I'm beating that have way bigger accounts? He's got a couple of Datacrons, okay? Let's go look at the other guy real quick. So this guy's got, what, five? This guy. How many Datacrons does, does the first opponent have? He's got... Seven. How many Datacrons do I have? Let's go and take a look, shall we? I have, I don't know, a little over a dozen Datacrons. On top of that, I've got 15 Omicrons now in this account. And I have another one ready to apply. Most of my opponents don't even have 10. And the reality is, is that I don't go out of my way to farm those Omicrons. I just actually gear and place those Omicrons on units that that matter. Uh, units like, you know, I put Mace Windows on for Territory Wars. I'm in a, I am I enjoy Territory Wars. It's another PvP form in the game. All three Amalguses. I put Star Killers, one that matters. I, I put Wampas on. I put Dashes on. Omi Mara Jade, Omi Savage, um, even Juhani's because I have Star Killer, right? Qui-Gon Jinn, uh, Zam. So Zam is gear 11. And that Omicron makes that team so nasty. That's why I can put that team. I, you know, I looked at that team and I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to use that on offense. So when you look at something like an Omicron, right, you really have to look at it and say, um, do I understand how this works with the team? Is it easy to understand? What does it do for the team? And then can I make it my opponent's problem? Because this is a low gear bounty hunter team that I'm running with it. It's all gear 11, gear 10 with a Relic 5 Bosk. But because that Omicron is there, every single character on this team is going to outspeed the majority of teams that are going to, that an opponent's going to take against it. And if they start to get momentum on an enemy, if they try to cheese this with something like, I don't know, look at it and go, oh, I think I can beat that with Nest. Well, no, you can't because my boss starts at like 350 speed. He's going to stun Nest, hopefully. And even if he doesn't, eventually Mando's going to get his disintegrate off and that's going to be it. That's going to be the end of the match. So, and even if it doesn't get a perma hold, it'll still get one hold and force them to bring an actual team in, uh, possibly, especially if they preload it and they don't kill anybody and it starts off preloaded, then they're even faster. Some of these guys might even run laps around them. Um, 
that that dash team is the same thing. That's why I put Han on the team was to make sure that I got the first shot. And if they try to bring CLS against it, well, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a coin toss between which CLS goes first. Um, so that's really, I think, the big things that, you know, I just want people to pay attention to. Uh, and I generally focus on with people, you know, is prioritize your crystals early on in the game. Um, if you don't think that those crystals are going to matter, I, I'm not a whale. I'm not a minnow either. I did get the hyperdrive bundle. Um, I do play two accounts. So I enjoy the game. I, I probably spend 50 bucks a pay period, something like that. I don't know. It's nothing crazy. You know, I'm not playing too many other games. So this is really my video game habit and I don't spend thousands of dollars, but I do spend every now and then, especially when I'm towards the end of a farm, just to make it go a little bit faster. But I also don't have to because I make more crystals than I can spend in a day if I'm just doing the first, I do the first tier, the first three refreshes on everything every day. And I st and that's including Cantina. So that's 300 plus 300 for the ships and normal. And then 150. I do 750 crystals worth of refreshes every day. And I can keep up with that and actually earn crystals when territory battles and GAC weeks pay out. Those crystals are the crystals that I can save and start to stash up to 6,000 crystals um, and still be able to keep up those farming habits without having to actually spend. So my spending goes a lot longer ways because I'm not just spending to refresh crystals. Um, but yeah, prioritize your crystals, pay attention to the meta shift and the crystals, where the crystals are, and not just the crystals, but also the gear economy. Um, you know, just to caveat back to that for a quick second, my current farm in the game is Jedi Knight Luke. I'm doing Jedi Knight Luke because I plan on doing Job of the Hut right afterwards. So that's what I'm focusing right now. And I'm pretty far behind on that farm, but that'll give me a bunch of extra relic units that for now I can just put on a defense and do what? Make my opponent's problem. I mean, that's all they're probably going to be, and they're probably not going to be that much of a problem. But when you set a, a low gear defense, relic units getting added to it do increase your defense's effectiveness. Um, so, you know, prioritizing your crystals, pay attention to the meta shift in the crystal economy uh, and gear economy. So these upcoming raid changes, that's where this comes from. It's going to be huge. All right. A lot of people aren't going to be ready for it. Um, especially low GP guilds that are clearing secret right now using imp troopers and shark troopers and a couple of JMKs to cheese, uh, to cheese sector phase one. The, if that's what they're going on and they're not trying to shift to meet the changes to the game ahead of time, CG has announced it, Tuskens and Jabba's, or yeah, really Tuskens and Hut Cartel, but Jabba's, Tuskens, Mandalorians, um, they're going to matter. Those teams are going to be the ones that matter. Why would they shift it to that? Because those are the teams that most people don't currently have in the game, and that is where the meta is going. So um, prioritizing your crystals, paying attention to the meta shift, crystals and economy, scouting your GAC opponents to actually get the wins and playing off of what they're doing. Um, and to kind of look at that just a little bit more in depth, Right, And I know I'm covering some of these things twice. To look at that a little more in depth, the way that you figure this out is look at their actual GAC history. Look for battles where they, your opponents, uh, former opponents, have cleared to fleet. See what teams they had to beat to do it. See if there's a pattern. If they've done that over multiple weeks, multiple seasons, do they change their defenses? Are they just hitting the one JMK and stopping to get 10 banners? If they're sitting at around an 800 banner... Uh, 800 banners scored in a rhodium from an opponent, that means that they probably cleared through a front wall and got to fleets. And look at what fleet they have set. Look at what back wall defenses they have set. Figure out what's on the bottom, what's on the top. Um, it just takes a little bit of digging into multiple opponents that have fought them in the past to figure out where those things are, right? Scouting is super important, and it allows you as a smaller player to adjust your defenses and bring the teams that you actually need to bring on offense uh, to be successful against your opponent and potentially put them into a scenario where they can fail. Um, and then lastly, just to reiterate it, right? Datacrons and Omicrons do not care about your feelings. So if you feel like, you know, you don't want them because you don't think they have a place in the game, they don't care. Your opponents don't care. If they're going to farm them and use them, you should be too. 
And that isn't just for you. That's for your guilds too. That's for territory wars. So that's for a lot of different modes in this game where they matter. Um, it, it, it's super important. Unfortunately, they exist in the game. So you just have to do it. Find things to get motivated about them. Find a reason to actually, you know, for me, I blitz through conquest that starts tomorrow. I blitz through sector five in five days. And then I spend the rest of the time she's and feats off of the datacron nodes. Um, and I've been able to do that. And I found a way to do it for this current conquest set. So having a diverse roster will allow you to do that. And I promise you that you can do it at five and a half million GP. I didn't spend a whole lot of money. I was able to get gold crate without having to do more than three conquest refreshes a day uh, at below the GP that I'm at right now in the first round of the Admiral Trench uh, conquest set. So it is doable. You just have to don't shut your mind off to it and spend a lot of time, probably one crystal refresh a day on each one of those nodes. Um, and you can be successful. And after you've farmed up a couple of the low level ones, uh, you know, and you got three or four of them in the bank, maybe five or six of them, depending on the teams that you have that can use them. Um, then you go in and you spend the rest of that conquest just farming the mats to, to level them up. And then the second time you do something similar, right? You just have to do it. So either way, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. And uh, yeah, who knows when the next time will be, but I will catch you then.